In this video, I'd like to look at the stoichiometry that occurs during titration. So we'll take a generic acid, HA, and we'll react that with, let's say, sodium hydroxide, a nice strong base. That acts as a double displacement reaction. And so we'll end up with sodium A, so sodium chloride, sodium acetate, whatever that works out to be, and water. And like all good double displacement reactions, that occurs if you produce water. Now to be really clear, what I've done here is I've got a strong base. And we know that any reaction, no matter what the acid is, any acid reacting with a strong base, that reaction will occur approximately 100%. So we can count on that one pretty much occurring completely. Now, for the sake of understanding, I'm going to simplify this a little bit. Because that's a strong base, the sodium isn't really very important. What matters is the hydroxide. So let's rewrite this just in terms of it being a strong base. So I'm going to take HA, my acid, plus just hydroxide, and that's going to produce for me the conjugate base and water. And again, we're still working with a strong base. We're still assuming that's 100%. Now, let's play some stoichiometry games. If I started with 10 of the acid, and I added one hydroxide, because this occurs 100%, I'm going to use up that one hydroxide, leaving me none. Because they react one to one, I'm going to use one of the acids, leaving me nine. And in the process of that reaction, that one acid will turn into its conjugate. I'm going to end up with one over there. Fairly simple. It's a simple subtraction problem. Look at another example. If I started with 10 of the acid, and I add, let's say, eight hydroxides, again, strong happens to 100%. So I'm going to use up all of those. Because it's one to one, I'm going to use up the same number of these. So I'm going to use up eight of those, leaving me two. Where did they go? Those eight became the conjugate. Third example. I start with 10 of those, and I add 10 hydroxides. Again, still a strong reaction, which means it's still going to occur 100%. I'm going to use up all of the base. In this case, I'm also going to use up all of the acid, because it's one to one. Where did it go? It went over here and became conjugate. Now I have 10 of the conjugate. One last example. If I start with 10 of the acid, and I add 12 of the base. Well, this is still going to go 100%, but what's happened with the stoichiometry is now the acid is the limiting reagent. The base is in excess. So I'm still going to use up all of it, but all of the acid in this case rather than the base because the number is smaller. So I use up all of the acid. Reaction is still one to one, so I'm going to use up the same amount of the base, in this case leaving me two. Where did they go? All those acids were turned into the conjugate. And that's the stoichiometry behind titration. And we're going to use this idea to start every titration problem.